Divine Truth Interviews Jesus, Mary and others are interviewed by members of the media and the public. Jesus is interviewed by Mary Magdalene on the topic of emotions. The interview was held on the 24th of April 2014 in Willesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is session two. Welcome to our FAQ sessions about emotions today. And myself and Mary will be working our way through a heap of questions that different people have asked. And we've decided to actually begin this session with a whole series of questions about very basic issues about emotions, very basic questions. So our suggestion is that this session, session two of emotions, is probably the session that most people want to start with when they are looking through the emotional frequently asked, emotions-based frequently asked questions. The other thing we'd like to say to you is that, we'd, uh, that we suggest that you watch how the human soul functions before you listen to all of our answers about emotion and emotional questions and feelings and so forth. The reason why we suggest that is that, that how the human soul functions is, is very important understandings that you will need to grasp most of the answers that we give. So that's what we'd like to suggest to you. So thanks for your time today, babe. Uh, to ask me the questions. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this session. <laughs> yeah. And I'd like to thank Lena and Eagle for their house and their time as well is <laughs> behind the cameras. We've just done a big video switch around uh, just before this session. So um, most of us are a bit tense. <laughs> have to relax a bit. <laughs> anyway, we hope you enjoy this session and uh, we hope to complete a number of questions about basic questions about emotions, where they come from, what, what are the basic kind of emotions that you may be facing and uh, why and how they get created. So that's the basic theme of today's session. So we hope you enjoy our company. What is emotion? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a, I suppose that's a very important question to ask when it comes to frequently asked questions about emotions. Yeah. And, and it's interesting, nobody actually asked that question, but let's, uh, let's focus on what emotions really are. Emotions are energy that's, that comes from within the soul of an individual mm -hmm. that's projected outwards. Now, the energy has to flow before it comes in a, an emotion. Yep. In other words, it has to be energy in motion. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it's flowing, and so now it becomes an emotion. If, it, if you sit on the energy, if you don't let it flow, then, of course, it's not an emotion. It's just a potential emotion at that point. Yep. The way the soul works is that um, our personality is expressed through emotion. And, in fact, em emotions are a major part of the soul and how it functions. And for this reason... This energy that gets bound up inside of the soul needs a form of release. Now, how it gets released depends on what you do or what kind of emotion is expressed. So, for example, if the energy that's stored up in the soul happens to be feelings of joy, then the emotion flowing out of you, if you allow the emotion of joy to flow out of you, you know, you'll start seeing a smile on the person's face. They usually become, you know, quite enlivened as well and their eyes, you know, sparkle. All of these are outward expressions of the flow of the energy from the soul to both of the bodies, the spirit body and the physical body. But the energy begins in the soul and flows out of the soul and it flows into other people's soul bypassing the physical and spiritual bodies. In other words, the energy doesn't flow out of the spirit body, mm -hmm. but rather flows directly out of the soul to the soul of another person. Now, of course, you can prevent that energy from flowing into you or out of you yep. through blockages and resistance and suppression and denial and all of these kind of things. But basically, going back to the question, yep. the emotion is energy in flow from the soul outwards or from a soul inwards. Mm -hmm. So it can flow in both directions, of course. But if it's your emotion, then it's flowing from your soul outwards. Yeah. And, it, and this energy is, express, is an expression of your personality, an expression of your individuality as well. So it encompasses all sorts of feelings and desires and passions that you may have. And passions and desires and feelings can all be expressed negatively as well as positively. So the soul's emotions are able to, the energy that's in motion can be expressed negatively, destructively, mm -hmm. or it can be expressed creatively. 
So the energy as it flows out of the soul, you, you can express that energy in a destructive way. So to do that, you would do something out of harmony with love and you, you, know, you might get angry or become violent or, and so forth. And those kind of things are the expression of that energy in motion, but in a violent or negative way. Yeah. Out of harmony with love. And then the other types of energy that can flow out of the soul uh, is energy that's always in harmony with love. So, so, so these are things like passions, desires, longings, um, the desire to create in harmony with love and so forth. And these feelings that, that are now energy, cause it become, they become in motion through the expression of your will. Mm -hmm. So that's the other factor about emotion. Emotion is the expression of the soul's will. So you can't intellectually express the soul's will, although the intellectual expression can be triggered by the emotional expression of the soul's will. So what happens with all of our thoughts and therefore all of the things we say, they all come from feelings and emotions, either suppressed or, in other words, used negatively or used positively. Right. And these emotions... This energy that's now in motion causes a trigger of the brains in the mind of the spirit body, the mind of the physical body, and all of a sudden now things get expressed, yep. verbally even, with yep. language, depending on, of course, what the person has learned mm -hmm. in their time frame in terms of how to express themselves emotionally. But the reality is the soul does not need language in order to express its emotion. Yep. And interestingly enough, the soul's emotion transcends language. In, the, in this sense, that the energy flowing out of the soul is easily recognisable, usually as an expression in the bodies, without there needing to be language expressed. Yes. So if someone feels condescending towards you, you will feel an emotion coming out of them mm -hmm. about that, and they won't even have to open their mouth, they won't have to talk in your language, and you know they're feeling condescending towards you. Yes. And you can see it in their face and see it in their body language and so forth. And this is why most of the expressions of the soul are almost uh, completely independent in many cases of what finishes up coming out of the person's mouth. Mm. Mm. So just to clarify that, you're saying that you're saying emotion transcends language. Yes. So, so this energy that's in motion, so the energy starts inside the soul and it comes out of the soul in motion. So now it's emotion. Yeah. And that emotion transcends any language in the sense that nobody needs to interpret it because you, you know from the feeling and from the demeanor, the general demeanor of the person, what's probably going on. You don't necessarily know why, uh -huh. but you know what. Yeah. So I just wanted to clarify, you're saying there's two ways that we sense emotion if we, if we are sensitive ourselves. One is through the way that the emotion affects the body, the spiritual or physical body in terms of demeanour and things like that. And, but the second is that we can sense it just emotionally without any uh, necessarily physical... Yes, I, I wouldn't call the first a way of it, uh, sensing emotion. I would call it a way of observing, of observing the results of the emotion. Okay. Whereas to me, the only real way of communicating emotion and receiving the communication of emotion is to be sensitive to the feeling of emotion. Yeah. That is the only real way you know for certain what a person is actually feeling. Yes. You can, through observation, make certain assumptions. You know, if someone's <laughs> yelling and screaming and, they, <laughs> and they're going off and they're angry and they're like fuming and there's rage coming out of them, then you can say, oh, he's pretty angry. <laughs> but, but if you closed your eyes and closed your ears, yeah. there's a, there is a soul sense where you can actually feel the rage coming from a person without seeing them and without hearing them. Yes. And that's the true sensitivity of the soul. The soul is that sensitive that it's able to feel the flow of emotion from one person to another. Yeah. And also, of course, the flow of emotion from God to you. Mm -hmm. so, so God's feelings for you are emotions. And so God made you, God created you sensitive to the flow of emotion. And the way God communicates to you is through this emotional process, mm -hmm. this flow of emotion from God to you. And all of the information that God gives you about God and the universe eventually comes through the flow of emotion, not from anything else. Yep. So it's a flow of energy coming out of God's soul, if you like, the great oversoul of the universe, if you yep. can call him that. And, and it, it, has, it knows no boundaries in terms of the speed of light or anything. It's not constrained by the speed of light. It's not constrained by 
by you know the physical process of of having to wait a distance uh, of distance and time. Yep. So it's actually it, it's not bounded by distance and time, and so it can enter you immediately as soon as God has the feeling. If you're open emotionally, and you you are open to God's feelings, and you want God's feelings to enter you because this is all the expression of your soul. The energy that coming that's coming from God's from God's emotion, the energy starts flowing into you, mm-hmm. right? And that comes through a connection, if you like. There's a there's a connection that occurs. It's an instant connection, without and it's unbounded by time and space. It allows you to connect to God emotionally, and the same applies with your connection to people. Yes. So, in other words, you can sense the feelings of people the instant they have those feelings, and it doesn't matter where they are. They can be here on earth. They could be on the other side of the earth. They can be in the spirit world, and they could be as high as possible in the spirit world. If you become sensitive enough, you'll be able to feel the energy coming from their soul directed at yourself. Yeah. And once you're even more sensitive, you'll feel the energy direct, coming from their soul directed at all things and all people. And yeah. also different types of people with different types of personalities. You'll feel the energy flowing from their soul. And the mm-hmm. personality creates a flavour in this energy. Yeah. So, so the energy can be expressed. And then once it's expressed, once it's allowed to flow and it's expressive and experienced by the person, then it's flowing. It's an emotion then. Yeah. And, and you can feel and sense its flavour. Yep. You can feel the personality behind the individual, the flavour of the emotion itself and what it means about the person. You can, sen- you can feel what they're even trying to say if they're speaking words to you as well. And sometimes you can even feel, many times in fact, you can feel that what they're saying is completely different to what they're actually feeling. Yep. If you're sensitive to the flow of this energy coming out of the soul, which mm-hmm. is emotion. Mm. Mm. Okay, a few more clarifiers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said that emotion, by definition, is flowing. Yes, it's the energy flowing. It has to be yes. flowing. It, it has can't to be, be just flowing. bound up. Yes. yes. So, uh, first question, mm-hmm. what happens when it's bound up? And when it's bound up, it actually it's an expression of the soul's will to bind up its own emotion mm-hmm. or deny it or, or suppress it or yes. resist it. Now, once we start doing that with the exercise of our will, which yeah. is actually an emotion in itself. I was itself. going to say, which in <laughs> itself is an emotion, Correct. isn't it? Yeah. So it's an emotional reason why we are suppressing or denying or resisting. And that willful use, that willful stop of flow is done through another emotional flow. Correct. There's yeah. always a reason yeah. why we do it. There's yeah. always a choice. And usually when we stop the flow of emotion, there's only two primary reasons. One is that we're afraid of expressing it. Uh, and the second one is that we feel it needs to be <laughs> suppressed, suppressed. In some, for some reason, you yeah. know, and usually because we're worried about becoming out of control or mm-hmm. and worried about hurting somebody or something like that. In other words, it's an emotion that is going to probably be negatively expressed and we're worried about the extent of its negative expression. Yeah. That's usually the only reason why we shut down the expression of emotion. Yeah. The rest of the time, we're pretty open to the expression of emotion, and, and most people on the, on the planet are fairly open to expression of certain types of emotion. Yes. So, for example, sexually based emotions, which are energy flows based that are sexual in nature, most people on the planet are pretty open to the flow of those particular emotions, mm-hmm. whereas other types of flows, it just depends on what's happened to you in the past as to what usually is the reason why you shut down the flow of certain kinds of energy. Yep. coming from your soul. So once this emotion has... So you could say this emotion is, build, is like a, a build-up of a feeling or, or energy inside of you, and it's not going to flow, it's not going to become emotion until you allow it. Uh-huh. If you suppress it, what it does to your soul is quite damaging. There's a whole heap of pathways inside of your soul, energy-based pathways, that begin being shut down. It's a bit like... If you can liken the soul to a brain, mm-hmm. which, which it has some similarities in some ways in terms of its complexity. It's far more complex than the brain. Yeah. But if you shut down certain pathways inside of your brain, you now no longer have the ability to transmit that particular information. Yeah. So, for example, if Along somebody has pathway. a stroke, for example, yeah. they shut down a certain pathway in their brain that allows the, it doesn't allow them anymore to express information that's still in their soul, but it no longer can be expressed outwards. 
And it's a similar principle with regard to how the soul works with emotion. If you begin to suppress or shut down your emotion, in other words, shut down the energy so that it doesn't flow, mm -hmm. it starts blocking up all of these different pathways. So you become more and more desensitised. And actually what happens from a, if you could observe the soul, which you can do once you get to the, the 36th dimension of the spirit world, um, it starts to shrivel. Mm -hmm. It's like energy is being taken away from the soul itself. It can't express its energy and it starts to actually shrivel and, 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 and looks, it looks like it's dying. Like, and if you can imagine it like a, 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 an, an apple, for example, or, or some kind of piece of fruit, sitting out in the open and slowly decomposing without there being any moisture. And what happens is eventually all the moisture disappears from the apple and it just shrivels, shrivels, shrivels up and becomes a dried apple. Yeah. And that's what happens to the soul, like it becomes a dried up soul. <laughs> yeah. And it still has the capacity to reverse this issue. Yes. But, but unfortunately, a lot of people don't reverse that for many, many years after they pass into the spirit world. Mm -hmm. So this energy, it's, it's vital that people understand that this energy must flow in order for you to maintain good health. Yeah. And that's good intellectual and emotional health in uh -huh. the end because in the end your intellect is completely driven by the emotions or the suppression of the emotions yeah. and for that reason people who suppress their emotions often become quite d disturbed and in fact you can become so suppressed in your own emotional experience that you allow other people to express their emotions through you mm -hmm. and that would be called psychosis yes. where you where you no longer wish to express your own emotions and feelings for whatever reasons whatever fears you have but you are completely open to the expression of others through you and once you do that you're opening yourself to all sorts of danger um, with regard to your mental health mm -hmm. and in fact almost all these problems that are called mental health problems on the planet are all associated with the denial of specific emotions. So at, at some point in the future, we'll be having a whole series of FAQs about yes. mental health and we'll actually be pointing out the linkage between what kind of mental health issue a person faces and what type of emotion they are, going, they are suppressing that created this mental health issue. Mm. So, but, but what we're basically saying is you start locking up this energy emotion and wow, you start causing all sorts of problems for yourself, but also lots of problems for other people because mm. other people generally have to now, they, they now don't have an easy way of determining what you feel. And so now communication is very difficult with you. Mm. They don't know what you feel and unless you can express it verbally, they won't know what you're feeling because you're blocking off the expression of your emotion, your mm. expression of the energy. The beauty of it, having a complete emo openness from an, uh, from an energy-based expression is that, is that everyone around you knows exactly what's going on. And so it's actually a very loving thing to do as well with, yep. for everyone around you. Of course, it's not loving for you to project a whole heap of unloving <laughs> or damaging energy-based emotions where you're making decisions that are damaging other people. But, uh, but at least everyone knows what you think and feel, <laughs> even when you're doing that. So the worst p p potential place for you to be with your emotion is to actually lock it up. Yeah. And this is what we're taught to do, unfortunately, on the planet quite from a very, very young age. But it's actually the worst thing you can do to your soul. You're better off expressing it, even if it's, even if it's negatively, because it, at least some energy is flowing and people can easily determine what's going on. Okay. Of course, the best option is to express your, your energy, you know, positive, using a positive will in harmony with love. And then, of course everybody around you will enjoy your company generally and, uh, and, and generally enjoy the expression of your personality that they observe. Mm. Mm. So you're saying that the nature of the soul is emotional, which is this energy in motion, and mm -hmm. it very negatively impacts upon every aspect of health when we shut down emotion. Correct. Um, when we shut what? down the energy, in, it's just an energy stored now in the soul. So, for example... If you, have a, if you have an energy, like a, a harmful energy, and stored in your soul, so let's say you feel anger, which is an emotion, and you feel the emotion of anger and you decide to suppress that and store that in your soul, now it's going to pervade every single decision you make. It's going to influence everything you do. It's going to determine how everybody around you responds um, because it, it's not being expressed, it's not being released from you. If you express it, it, it's released. And once it's released, it no longer determines 
what's happening around you. And, and emotion stored or energy stored within the soul now creates attractions because God is always attempting firstly to help you express that energy and secondly, if it's a negative energy, to help you release it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, so God's de designed the soul and designed the universe and all of the laws that, that govern the soul in such a way that God wants you to feel emotion and God is going to be bringing you events constantly to help you do such a thing, mm -hmm. even if the emotion is negative. Mm -hmm. Because if the emotion is negative or positive, if you store it, it's going to damage you in some way. You need, it needs an expression. It needs an outlet. Yep. So when we suppress it, we're essentially trapping it within the soul. Mm -hmm. And that, regardless of whether that's a positive or negative emotion from mm -hmm. what you're saying, that begins to damage us. Correct. And it's a primary cause of disease. Any, particularly any negative emotion trapped within the soul that we don't allow the expression of, it's the only cause of all diseases and all accidents and all other things actually that happen to you, whether you are on earth or in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And this is where people don't understand how, like, how much it affects their entire existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so if we summarise what you've said, mm -hmm. you've said that energy is or emotion is energy in motion yes and before it's in motion we can't call it emotion <laughs> no it's a potential emotion uh -huh. at that point it's a uh -huh. potential expression yep. of the soul and it doesn't come out of the soul at that point so therefore it's not uh, you, you don't see the evidence of the will of the soul at that point uh -huh. so much um, and that's the that's you know, what creates a lot of confusion in inter interactions with other people, of course, because if they can't feel you, yeah. they can't feel what you're feeling and they can't see, sense what you're feeling, then often people are confused and then that's when they start using their intellect to try to determine what you're feeling and they yeah. watch your body language to try and determine what you're feeling. But all of that is the outward expression of the emotion that's all blocked up inside of you. Mm. And so, you know, if we allow the expression of the emotion in a pure manner, the energy just to flow out of us in a pure manner, it's the simplest interaction you can have with a person. The person knows exactly what's going on inside of you with one exception, and that is depending on their filters of what they block in terms of their interpretation. Yeah. So in other words, if they're blocking the flow of the emotion coming out of you, and they're filtering it through their own filters like anger or rage so or fear. So through their own suppression and through of, their own suppression. Of emotion, Correct. Yeah, that will affect how sensitive they are to what's coming towards them. Yes, and it will even affect how they interpret the emotion. Mm -hmm. So you could be happy but they think you're sad. You yeah. could be you could be excited and they think you're angry. Yes. You could be excited and they think you're afraid. Yeah. You know, so yeah. because they, because of their blocks inside of their soul. They'll, they'll often misinterpret the flow of what's coming through to them. So everything gets interpreted through the soul mm. and the soul's will. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and so our emotion is an expression of the soul's will. Yes. You said that. But you've also said that um, emotion is the thing that transcends language or if you like it's the soul's way of communication. Yes, and this is probably the proper way of saying it. It is the soul's language. Uh -huh. Emotion is the soul language. Yep. And the language, the words that we use, and even in the spirit world, you might use thoughts rather than words because you are able to telepathically communicate, particularly in the spirit world, you learn that. Of course, it's a capacity we have here on earth as well, but, but most people don't learn it on earth, so they learn it in the spirit world to telepathically communicate. But they're still communicating thoughts. Yes. They're not actually communicating emotion. But the way the soul wants to communicate is emotionally. Yeah. So once you become a one with God, you actually are only ever communicating emotionally and the thoughts are generated by the flow of the emotion. So the, flow, the emotion is so descriptive that it tells you exactly what to think. Mm. So if that makes sense. So in other words, what you're thinking is going to be the complete expression of that soul's emotion. So you could describe it right down to the, yeah. the tiniest detail using language, but it'll be because you're so sensitive to the emotion, it, it, it now has a language of its own. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, there's a few things I want to <laughs> bring up from what you just said. Sure. One, you're talking about in the spirit world, um, being so sensitive to emotion that you could almost describe the thoughts or it creates thoughts. You can thought. describe the thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, it, that's the case here on earth now though, isn't it? Of All course. of my thoughts are coming from 
emotions, Correct. either the suppression or the expression of Correct, emotion. but that's not the way most people interpret them, through their emotions. So what, what generally happens is this in terms of communication on Earth, and this is the problem with communication on Earth, mm -hmm. is that we have emotions. We don't usually, uh, we very, very rarely allow their communication. So what we do is that those emotions generate some thoughts. Yep. Those thoughts are translated into language. That language drives what we say, say to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Of course, on the receiving end, that language gets communicated into thoughts. And of course, unfortunately, that's determined by how their soul is already feeling. So, you know, you can say something to a person, but their soul might be feeling something completely different. And so the thoughts that you're trying to express verbally enters their ears, gets translated into the, the language, gets translated into thoughts. And then, of course, the thoughts get misinterpreted because now the emotion determines what thoughts are going to be, be reflected back into emotion inside of their soul. So it's sort of like we're going emotion, la thoughts, language, transmission, reception, th language, Thoughts, emotion, yes. down the other chain. Yeah. And there's basically, if you think of it, there's eight different ways that something can get misinterpreted. And mm -hmm. this is why most people misinterpret yeah. Yeah. each other most, most very frequently yeah. because they can't actually feel the intention, the direct intention of the actual flow of the emotion. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so this is where we were a little while ago where you were saying that um, basically... So in an ideal world, mm -hmm. if I'm completely open mm -hmm. to emotion, so all of the energy within me mm -hmm. is flowing, and you are in the same state, mm -hmm. then this is the recipe for perfect understanding and communication between two souls. Correct. So this is when I'm most fluent in the language of emotion. Yes, you wouldn't even would... need to verbally express anything. Yep. And the other person, because of their own sensitivity, would know exactly what you're feeling. Yep. And even the thoughts it would generate. Because if they are completely at one with God, it would generate the same thoughts within them. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Just... Because... Um... I was just trying to establish some basic things and you keep and throwing keep in the thoughts. <laughs> and I'm like, well, can we just get the basics and then I'll uh, sure, like, sure. add Let's that on. Because when we, it's kind of like, uh, I'm trying to summarise what you've already said to and establish the baseline. More. And then you keep saying <laughs> other things and I think oh, we've got to summarise that somehow as well. And then yeah. go back, I'm trying to establish for the viewer just the very basics of sure. what you said. Sure. And then, so let's go for the basics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> energy. Uh, emotion is energy in motion. Allowed to be in motion. Allowed by the soul. to be in motion by the soul. Yep. Um, when we shut down that energy, mm -hmm. when we shut down emotion, yep. there are a number of flow on effects. Yes, it's and now potential energy. It could potentially be allowed to flow. Yep. But we're using our, our will, which yes. is another emotion, as we yes. said. Yes. There'll be reasons emotionally why we're using our will to do such a thing. Yeah. But we're now using our will to su shut down the flow of that particular emotion. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when emotion, when we use our will, and it's always our will that shuts down emotion. Always. Not ever somebody else's unless... We are sensitive to somebody else's feelings and we shut them down because we're sensitive to their feelings. We're afraid of their feelings. We're afraid of their feelings. But in the end, that fear is an expression of our will also. Correct. So it's our will being exercised. Yeah. Any shutdown of the soul occurs directly through the expression of our own will. And obviously, conversely, the same would be true. With opening it. Allowing our emotions, again, opening it. It's directly under the impact Control of, of our, our own will. will. Yep. Yeah. But when emotions are shut down, there are a number of effects that you've said. Yes. Firstly, it causes damage to our soul, our physical body, and our spiritual body. Yes. Yep, and it's Can the cause of all illness. Can I explain why perhaps it has... Because I haven't explained the link between the soul and the physical and spiritual bodies. No. Of course, the soul's energy surrounds both bodies. Yep. In other words, the bodies are encapsulated within the soul's energy. So you could think of the soul as a ball of energy, of which you're one half, by the way. You're only one half of the soul, so you've got one half of a ball of energy. Yep. Yep. And this one half of a ball of energy has encapsulated within it two bodies, yep. a physical and a spiritual body. Now, these bodies are all based around how energy, they all, they all, their health is all based around how energy flows mm -hmm. within them. Mm -hmm. If you shut down the flow of energy in the soul, 
energy must be shut down in certain parts of these bodies. Yep. So these bodies now become shut down with the flow of energy. Yep. And this is what causes the damage to the bodies. So the bodies now start getting sick and, and go, growing old. And if you shut down your soul enough, you, you'll die yep. from old age. Yep. And this is why everybody on earth finishes up generally dying from old age because we're so shut down uh -huh. inside of the soul. Yep. There's not enough energy flowing to, from the soul to the bodies to allow the continual replication process to continue. And in fact, it even causes a, a, a genetic degradation of the bodies yep. because of the shutdown of the flow of, of, of energy in the soul. Yep. So, so even what we call genetic illnesses are all the result of the shutdown of the flow of the soul's energy. And sometimes those genetic impacts are passed on to the children through the shutdown in the parents. Correct. The, the parents are so shut down yep. to a specific emotion that they, by the time the child is, as soon as the child is uh, conceived, yep. from that moment on the child feels it also must shut down the same yep. f type of energy within itself because to express it would require a huge amount of opposition to be overcome yes. from the parents. And so the child learns to shut down <coughs> the exact same emotion. Yeah. And once that happens, the child now can, be, can then finish up having exactly the same genetic deformity yeah. as the parents have. Yeah. And this is a common cause of most genetic deformities, in yeah. fact, where long lineages of shutdown have occurred in specific areas. Mm. Mm. So basically, you're saying that the soul is the grand controller of everything. Correct. Of, the, of all experience, thoughts, yes. um, our yes. physical health, Correct. our spiritual body's health. Correct. So the soul's in charge. It's completely and the opposite than most people believe. Most people who have any knowledge of the soul, even in the spirit world, believe that the mind controls the soul, yeah. and that is not the case at all. The yeah. mind is... The mind, in fact, the mind of the spirit body is just an organ like the brain of the physical body is an organ. Mm -hmm. And they are all responding to the soul. Yep. So even what happens in the brain and the mind of the spirit body is completely dependent upon what's going on within the soul. Yep. Yep. And so the soul, as this grand controller of everything, mm -hmm. its core experience or substance or language is emotion. Yes. And so when... When there's a shut... Can we say the soul has energy yep. and its core way of expressing itself is expressing the energy, which is ah, emotion. Beautiful. Does that make sense? Yes. So yep. the soul has energy and you can bind it up if you want. You can try to suppress it, resist it, deny that it exists and all those kind of things. But it will come out eventually somehow. Yep. Usually the energy does get expressed. Yep. But, um, but the soul has energy and... Once it comes in motion, yep. it is now being expressed or experienced by that particular person. So in other words, now they're feeling their individual experience, yes. which is a way that they determine their own individuality. It's a way they see their own personality. Yep. It's a, it and causes all sorts of... It's even the way that we develop our personality and grow, cor isn't correct, it? Correct, yep. correct, correct. Yep. Um, so, so without understanding how the soul actually functions and then understanding that emotion or yep. energy in motion is the way you express how your soul. Yes. And um, you're really shutting yourself down quite markedly and causing quite a lot of damage to yourself, to your, envi to your environment, but also to your bodies and also to your progeny. Any yeah. person who is going to be encompassed in, with your genetic material will also have similar emotional problems as a result of your emotions. Yeah, so if we could just go back to the point that I was saying about shutting down the emotion, mm -hmm. uh, because um, we've said that it, now we know, we've established very clearly it damages us mm -hmm. and, and our progeny and all of these mm -hmm. things that you just said. Mm -hmm. But also there's a, a, an important point you were making earlier about understanding each other. Yes. And when we shut down emotion, we limit our capacity to be understood and to yes. understand others, even yes. if those others are fully expressing their emotion. Correct. If we are shutting down what we, the energy within inside of us, yes. this affects how accurately we understand what's going on in the world around us. Correct. So if you look at any engagement between two people, there is what's being transmitted out of one individual mm -hmm. towards the other person, and then there's what is being received by the other person inside of themselves. And each one of those things are, are affected by the blocked emotion within yeah. each party. 
So, so it's like you could see it like a filter, like yeah. a lens that you're pu trying to push light through yeah. and the lens is changing the colour of it depending on how you see things. Mm -hmm. And this is how the soul works with regard to its stored emotion. In other words, it's stored energy that's not being expressed. It, every emotion it does express has to be expressed through the stored energy. Yes. So the stored energy changes the flavour of the expression. Mm -hmm. So this means that, you know, you might start out having a happy thought, but by the time you've expressed it, there's a bit of anger in it. Yes. And that's because inside you probably have some stored anger-based emotion. Yep. And then every time you express any emotion now, it's got to go through that filter. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's got sexual injuries, you notice this a lot, for example, yep. where, you know, somebody, uh, what can be a beautiful experience in terms of a sexual engagement with somebody that you love can become a very distorted experience, you know, where people become involved in even what I'd call damaging or violent behaviours in the expression of their sexual energy. Mm -hmm. And it's all through the filter of their other filters, what, what yeah. they've denied within themselves. Mm -hmm. And the same applies on the receiving end. So, so I could, uh, I'm interpreting what's coming at me through my stored, denied and suppressed emotion. Mm -hmm. Now, once I've no longer storing it and denying it and suppressing it, now I've got complete flow, so when that energy comes to me, I can allow that energy to go through me, and therefore I know what's being felt. I, I can interpret it accurately. Yes, and this is, so we have the picture where if, if we're suppressing, everything that we express is filtered through this injury. Everything we receive is filtered through this injury. Correct. But conversely, if we're completely open emotionally, mm -hmm we become sensitive, very sensitive to what's happening around us. Mm -hmm. And this is where... Whether that's in the spirit world with people we can't see or people on earth. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where they are. Yes. They can be anywhere in the universe and you can feel them. And with God. Yes. Herself. Same applies, of course. And as this long is... as there is an openness to God, of course. Yes. So, so we have to be so open. have to be open to the Emotionally, to everything. This is the... Yes. If I'm speaking. Yes. And this is where um, humility leads us to truth, doesn't it? in that if we're open to, or well, maybe that's too big no, no. a leap. Yeah, but if we're open to everything emotionally, we then have access to the truth of what's happening because we have no filter inside of us. Correct. And then in if practice, we... though, it's not like that. Because it, it, initially, when we're interacting with people, when we've been born on this earth, we already have, through the gestation period, we've already imbibed many emotions that are now filtering exactly. our souls. So, so by the time we're even born, we're already filtering a lot of the information coming into our soul. So therefore, we're misinterpreting it. Yep. And, and unfortunately, it requires a slow process to reverse that yes. condition. But for most people on earth, they never reverse that condition. No. And so most people on earth uh, uh, grow in their misinterpretation of other people. Yes, mm. yes. But you had mentioned this ideal circumstance where there's a, there's a, the soul's language is in play. Yes. There, when there is no emotional impediment, yes. all energy is flowing through you. Yes. Then you are completely in contact with the truth and the reality of what's happening Correct. around you. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and if you think about it, potentially we could have children born mm. in that state, mm. that they are completely open to the flow of all the emotion around them and can interpret it correctly based on what they've learnt already while they're in the womb. Yeah. And as a result of that, they'd be very, very well developed for children in love, but mm -hmm. also in, uh, in their intellectual knowledge. Because when there is no emotional impediments, intellectual, intellectual understanding also is now rapidly expanded and, and improves exponentially yeah. with the release of each emotion. Yeah. So, so once a person is free of negative emotions that cause the impedance of energy flowing within the soul, they now have the ability to have far more understanding and growth than they ever, ever had before. And this is why the majority of people on earth don't grow very much intellectually mm -hmm. uh, because there are so many impediments emotionally to the growth. Mm. So, so this is why the energy locked up emotionally, like as, we, as I said earlier, people have no understanding of how damaging it is. It's, like, it's damaging everything. It damages not only you, but also everyone around you. It damages also every interaction you have. Every single thing that you do is misinterpreted or misexpressed, you know, yes. not expressed accurately yep. because, because of the stored energy that's in your soul that's preventing the flow of that energy outwards mm. and, and also within mm -hmm. yourself. 
Mm. Mm. Okay, beautiful. You covered so much <laughs> information yeah, there. Yeah, obviously there's a lot more we could say. Yes. But, but it's important for people to understand why we're made this way as well. I feel yeah. like God made us this way so that this this beautiful smooth communication can actually occur. So every interaction in the celestial spheres of the spirit world are actually, are actually this beautiful smooth communication. Everyone understands everyone. Yeah. No one misunderstands somebody else. Everyone, you don't need to say anything. Sometimes you do because you mm -hmm. want to. You know, it's a part of your expression you know, in your language and so forth. And you can speak any language then. So you speak any language. But you have thoughts and you can telepathically communicate those thoughts. But, but the reality is the real communication is happening emotionally. Mm -hmm. That's when, that's how you really feel and sense the person. And that's also how you feel and sense God. Mm. In fact, there is no other way of communicating with God. In fact, God does not communicate intellectually or with words. And so any person who says to you that God, you know, talk to me, will know it. it's impossible. In fact, God does not talk to people. God expresses himself emotionally with people and words may appear in their mind as a result of that, but, but if they're hearing words directly with no expression of God's emotion, then it means it's just another spirit or another person talking in a, in a language to them. Yeah. And mo many people on earth misinterpret what they call God's voice is not God's voice. Mm -hmm. It's a, just the voice of a person they can't see. Yeah. Yep. Mm. So, so there's so many things we could say about emotion <laughs> and how important it is. And, you know, we've done a whole series of seminars, uh, just started them recently about the importance of emotion. And, but I thought initially it's great to define what it is. It is, and, it is. And, and it's very difficult um, to, to not digress slightly to give context to what you're saying there course, and yeah. to give examples. So mm. Um, mm. I was trying to rein you in a little, uh, you know, <laughs> just to try to keep it... Um, as quite as nice as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, but, is a, but it, uh, it is a very complex thing, though. It, it is. It is yeah. very complex uh, because the soul is a very complex creation. It is the most complex creation that God has ever done. So, so it's far more complicated than the universe itself, actually, the soul, mm -hmm. in terms of its intricacy. And, and it's far more complicated than the human brain and also the spirit body's brain. It's far more complicated than any other organ or even all organs together in the physical body and the spirit bodies. It's far more complicated than all those things. Mm. So it's really important that we understand the basics of how it functions. Yeah, and you say it's complicated, but in fact, it's a very simple system, isn't it? Yes. That, ha that is full of beautiful intricacy that functions well if we just embrace some core things, yes. some core emotions, if yes. you like. But because there's so much injury on the planet emotionally, yes. it all becomes very complex. And yeah. explaining it from all the different ways it can go wrong, go wrong and, be and, right and be right and yeah. the different applications for these truths yeah. that then it becomes a complex kind oh, of, of discussion. Of course, you, you, could speak, you could speak for millennia yes. about an emotion and how yeah. it operates and still have somebody intellectually not understand what's really going on until they actually feel what's going on inside yeah. of their soul. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing to bear in mind with all of this too is that the soul has the capacity to infinitely expand mm -hmm. through some capacities that God gave it through the reception of God's love. So God's love becomes like a switch that allows the soul to transform from its original creation into a new creation. Mm. So th there's a whole series of complex issues in that yes. that uh, are affected by the flow of energy inside yeah. of the soul. And, and we need, so we need to understand that not only has the soul been created finitely under certain circumstances, and the circumstance obviously is if we're not connected with God, but the soul also has this pot potential of infinite expansion, mm -hmm. which means the emotions also have the potential of infinite expansion. And, and, this, and therefore the power has the potential of infinite expansion. And, and this, these potentials alone mean that the soul is being created so complex that, that I feel that it doesn't matter how long the human examines the subject of the soul, they still will not know everything about the soul. Yeah. So while there are many spirits who know lots of things, or well, pretty much everything about the physical body, and lots of things about the spirit body, there's no single person at this point in time, aside from God, who knows everything about the human soul. Yeah. So perhaps then, just to finish, some of the really key things that you've said about emotion. Mm -hmm. Energy, it's energy and motion. Energy and motion. Um, 
it's not thoughts, but create thoughts. Correct. Um, that emotions are passions and desires and an expression of our will. Yes. And we can choose to express them negatively or positively. So in a way and that... even that's driven by an emotion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Usually. An expression of our will, which yes. is emotional. But it can be damaging or it can be healing and creative. Yes. yes. Yeah. God created us naturally. It probably should be said in closing on the session. Mm -hmm. That God created us naturally to express our emotion in harmony with love. And it's only other things that occur, decisions that we make... Yep that cause anything other than that to occur. Mm. And this is uh, the expression of our will. And our will is determined not by injuries. Uh, it's determined by other processes within the soul where we start to develop desires yeah. that then become expressed. And desires finish up usually becoming expressed emotionally. And this is our soul using its emotional expression, its flow of energy, if you like, emotion, mm -hmm. in a way that it can either in harmony with love or in disharmony with love. Yeah. So it's important for people to understand that you can use the, the energy with inside of yourself to flow in a positive way, in harmony with love, or in a negative way out of harmony with love. And God created you with the freedom to do so. Yeah, yeah. And that goes for whether the emotion that is within us is, is in harmony with love or out of harmony with love, doesn't it? Correct. It's still possible to have an emotion within us that's out of harmony with love that we choose to deal with in by, a, in by a loving way. By allowing its expression in a loving way. Yep. So and in other words, we might be angry. Yep. So the way that might happen is we might be angry and we decide rather than dumping it on our partner whom we're angry with, we go into our room and we feel the emotion and we eventually get back to what the cause was mm -hmm. and we feel the emotional reason why we were triggered into anger under those circumstances. And that's using, uh, that's even allowing the flow of negative emotion yes. in a positive manner, yeah. in a healing manner. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Mm. Thank you very much. Pleasure. What is the source of emotion? Okay, well, the source of emotion is the human soul uh, or God's soul, one of the two. Um, there is no other source of emotion in the universe. The uni in, the, in the entire universe, emotion must come from souls. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, and in this we're basically saying that God is the great oversoul, if you like, of yeah. the universe. And there's, so therefore lots of emotion come from God as mm -hmm. well. It's, it comes from the soul, though, in different ways. It comes through the expression of the soul's nature and personality. It comes uh, as well through whatever filters the soul has imposed upon it through its, own, through its experience. So the experience of the soul determines how often the emotion is expressed. Mm -hmm. But, the, but to, for, as a pure answer, the human soul creates all emotion mm -hmm. that is expressed from the human soul. So if I personalise that, every emotion I feel is created by me? Correct. Okay. You can't blame it on somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where this whole concept of, you know, if you get angry and you say, oh, you made me angry. No, I didn't make you angry. Something I did caused something to be filtered inside of your own soul. Yeah. through some other prior so experience. It, it was received. It was received it, as in a certain, in in a a certain, certain way. way. Yep. And as a result of some soul-based damage that you've occurred, incurred through your life, you've then decided to express that as anger. Mm. So it's sort of like a responding to stimuli. Would you, it's not quite as simple as responding. Yeah, it is yeah. oversimplifying it. Because yeah. the reality is you may have done something that the average person would interpret as a violent act. Mm -hmm. But once the soul is completely removed of all unloving emotion, the soul who receives that act doesn't uh, respond violently to the act. No, but the emotion they feel is... is a violent is... emotion, but it doesn't... It's like, so, for example, if you express yourself violently towards me in some way, if I have got some emotional injury, there's a high likelihood I'll either get angry or afraid through your violent expression. Mm -hmm. But if I have no emotional injury and all of my soul is already in harmony with God and with, in harmony with love, I will not respond in fear and I will not respond in anger 
and I will not respond in addiction. And in fact, it will have barely any, inf any influence at all on my soul. So even if you chose to stab me to death, mm -hmm. it still would not feel any worse in my soul. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes. And this is because the soul that is completely free of all negative emotion yeah. no longer interprets the event as a personal attack upon itself. Yeah. So this is very important to understand. So the soul creates the emotion. It comes from the soul. But if the soul is completely free of any negative emotion, once that emotion that comes from somebody else enters it, it is com it's, it's interpreted completely differently. Mm -hmm. It's interpreted with love, if you mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. So the filter only becomes love, and therefore the result is the soul receiving that what would normally be classified as a terrible emotion. Uh, doesn't feel terrible as a result of receiving it. Mm. Mm. So we can have emotions that arise from within us. Well, all, all of our emotions arise from within us. Yep, but we can have some that are negative and some that are positive. Yes. And then we can have some well, that are... Well, remember the negative ones are all about what is stored within us. Okay. So, so this is our filters. So the negative emotions that come out of us all begin because we started to suppress something. And usually it wasn't us that suppressed it, it was usually our environment. Uh, it, when we were young and undeveloped, our environment told us to suppress it, so we learned suppression. Yep. We learned resistance. Yep. Yep. And so at the soul level, and because we had no intellectual development, our soul just learned that it has to do that. Uh -huh. and, and it felt forced into doing that yep. um, because of living with parents usually who forced it. So it yeah. becomes a damaged understanding of the will? Correct. Yeah. And it becomes a damaged understanding of the emotion yeah. as well. Yeah. So now when somebody is enraged with that particular soul, that soul responds either in fear or rage itself mm -hmm. or in addiction, you know, try to pander to the person and calm down the rage. Yeah. A person who is not injured would not do any of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. they, they would respond completely differently. Mm -hmm. so, so this is what we need to understand is that the soul creates the emotion there is no other creator of the emotion. You can't say somebody else created your emotion. No. The soul creates the emotion, but it's created the, the, the emotion is created through the denied emotion, the filters, if you like. And those filters, we learnt to create. We created them ourselves, actually, but they, it was because the environment forced them upon us yes. and we imbibed them mm -hmm. and we didn't have any development to resist that process. Mm -hmm. And that's why the negative emotions or the filters are still within our soul, mm -hmm. determining what we do. Mm. Yeah. So we can have negative emotions or positive emotions as a result of stimuli. Mm -hmm. but then we can just have emotions that are always with us, say in the first example that you gave where someone is at one with God or they've let, released an awful lot of negative uh, mm -hmm. uh, filters. Mm -hmm. And then they just have... A pleasant emotion flowing all of the time mm -hmm. regardless of the stimuli. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Cool. And God has pleasant emotion flowing all the time regardless of the stimuli. Yeah. So in other words, God doesn't get angry because some person on earth decided to do something, <laughs> you know, against God, as yeah. the saying goes. And God doesn't get upset about those kind of things. God never is angry. God's never wrathful. God's never punishing because God always has lovely emotions flowing from God's soul. Yeah. And God has no emotional injuries. Yeah. And it's yeah. only the emotional injuries that, are, that it cause the blockages within the soul that create the filters that would create negative emotion. Uh -huh. so, so once you haven't got them, of course, then yeah. that doesn't occur. Yeah. So we need to understand that the soul creates the emotion. It's not, it's not our environment that does it. Yeah. And in fact, our soul... Through, uh, through its blocked emotion, it attracts the creation of other people's emotion, which is an interesting factor about the soul as well. Do you want to explain that a little bit? Or? Sure. It, uh, if my soul has blocked, uh, if, for example, let's say it, as a childhood experience, I through, went through a certain experience where I blocked fear about spiders, for example, just a very simple blockage of an emotion. And the reason why fear would have been created in that moment was because I might have picked up a spider initially and my mother or father would have gone into some kind of anger or rage or something like that, which is or a fear. or fear, yeah. which is a withdrawal of love. Yeah. And in that moment, when love is withdrawn, I've learnt that love gets withdrawn when I pick up a spider. Mm 
-hmm. In other words, now I become afraid of the spider, yeah. right? Yeah. Because love has been withdrawn mm -hmm. as a result of me picking up this spider. Yeah. So it's not the spider I'm really afraid of. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the withdrawal of love that occurred that I'm afraid of. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's now an emotion inside of me. Now, when somebody, when somebody, well, I just see a spider, you know, like get in the car and on the window is a spider. Mm -hmm. My emotion is going to be an emotion of fear, yeah. right? And the reason why is I've now got this filter inside of me. And the filter says, whenever you see a spider, you're going to have love withdrawn. Mm. Uh, that's the filter. Mm -hmm. That's the filter you're going to have to feel if you want to get rid of your f fear of spiders. Yeah. But most people don't feel it, of course. We go into terror about it and panic about it. So we see the spider. It's a reminder of the withdrawal of love, right? It, it triggers the withdrawal, the feeling of the withdrawn love mm -hmm. that occurred in our childhood that we that didn't... That was suppressed. That was suppressed yeah. by our family generally, you know. Yeah. And so it was suppressed. And so we, it's now locked up within our soul. So now what happens is it determines our reaction to the spider. Yeah. So we panic, we panic, we get out of the car, you know, <laughs> you know we've got all this heart and so forth, just panicking about the spider. But a spider's just a tiny little thing, <laughs> arachnid, <laughs> you know. The, yeah. And, you know, even if it's a big one, like sometimes here in Australia, you get yeah. them the size of a plate or so, but it's still a fairly small compared to yourself, right? Yeah. And yet you're so panicky about the whole thing. Yeah. And, and the reason why is because of this relationship between the withdrawal of love, creation of fear, the, store, the emotion is now stored inside of your soul and it's now filtering every, every response. Mm. And you were explaining to us why you might then attract more of those things. Well, remember that, that God has designed the soul in such a way that everything that it is suppressing or shutting down has to be attracted in order for that feeling to be released. So you will have more spiders in your life yep. as a result. So that's part of God's, what you're saying is part of God's design Correct. to actually help us connect with those parts of us that have been suppressed because while they're suppressed, as you mentioned in a previous question, that's affecting our health negatively. Of course. And God wants the opposite of that for us. Correct. So his design laws that would actually bring more spiders into our life to help us release this release fear, fear, which is all about the withdrawal of love yes. that came from our childhood. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's connected to mother or father usually, you know, or somebody who is in a position of responsibility or power over us. And we need to work our way through that emotion. We need to release that emotion. Once that emotion is released, we will no longer be afraid of spiders. Yep. So in other words, we'd be comfortable just like we were as a child, picking up one and looking at it, even if it's poisonous and putting yeah. it down again. And the, and the spider won't bite us either mm -hmm. because it's the spider and all insects and other creatures on the planet all respond to fear in terms of attack. So they attack people in fear. Yeah. So, so, so naturally, it's not going to bite us if we're no longer in fear anymore about yeah. it. Yeah. So, so this is the beautiful way in which God's created the soul. We can release everything but we have to go back to its original creation mm -hmm. and, and, and let it go. The stored emotion that was stored there, all locked up, has to come out. And so this is why most people also respond to like a spider in a very childlike way. Yeah. Because usually the, the original cause of the emotion happened during their childhood during, at, at a certain age. And usually for most of them, it was usually before the age of three. You know, you pick up a spider and... You know, mum goes berserk, basically, right? So, so now, or dad goes berserk, yeah, but usually it's mum in this case of a spider. With dad, it might be more like a snake or something yeah, like that. Yeah. But it just depends on what was happening at the time and how afraid they are as well. These, and these are very Australian examples, aren't yes, they? If you yeah. live in Europe, you probably don't encounter snakes or spiders. Maybe very not. Much, but, but we do. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot here. <laughs> yeah. so, so the fear is the creator of the withdrawal of love mm -hmm. and we love is withdrawn so now we associate that particular object with the withdrawal of love and once we've done that association emotionally inside of the soul that is the filter yeah. the filter is now present now the soul will attract a whole heap of events to trigger that filter in other, in other words god is trying to help us to release the filter god's saying that's no good in you it's not helping your life it's, it's going to harm your life because it's fear fear always harms your life somehow it causes you to control your life in some direction that you don't need to and so God's going no my laws are all going to be now to release that fear yeah. and so your soul being in that state of fear of spiders uh, will now attract more spiders yeah in order to help you release the fear mm -hmm. and that's the conundrum we have 
and then the more we try to deny that, <laughs> the more afraid we become and the more yeah. attraction there is. Yeah. And it gets to the point where usually we're so, we have so many things happening that it becomes overwhelming. And if we're not careful in that state, we can become even psychotic. See, if we're not allowing ourselves to go back to the original emotion, we're creating more and more suppression. The more mm -hmm. suppression there is, the more chance there is of psychosis. Yeah. The more chance there is of us actually completely avoiding our life. Yes. And this is what, where, what often triggers mental illness. Now, now, the reality is most of us are mentally ill <laughs> on the planet because most of us have a whole heap of suppressions going on and a whole heap of fears going on. It's just what is tolerable from society's perspective is what's defined, defined yes. as the illness. So, so there are certain levels of illness that is all like, that's normal. <laughs> so if she said the average woman, are you afraid of snakes? And they say, yeah, but isn't that normal? <laughs> and from God's perspective, no, that's a mental illness. <laughs> You've got a mental illness if you're afraid of spiders or snakes or any insect for that matter. Yeah, yeah. If you're afraid of any disease, you've got a mental illness from God's perspective because all diseases are all created by this denial of the flow of emotion inside of you. So all of these things are all, from God's perspective, mental illnesses. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, there's something yeah. wrong, diseased in the way in which you're feeling and thinking. Yeah. And God's trying to help you release that. Yeah. And the more you resist that, the more potential there is of you getting into a state where you completely try to withdraw from your own soul. Yeah. And that's a very, very damaging place. Mm. And that's what causes mental illnesses that cause things like psychosis, where people go out of their mind, as yeah. we often say. Yeah. And the reason why they've done that now is because there are so many fears that they're unwilling to face, so many problems within their soul coming from their childhood experience that they have no willingness to feel the pain of, that now they are trying to get away from their life completely. And unfortunately, that then encourages other people to take over their life other people being spirits uh, to take over their life. And this is what is a major cause of many people's problems mm -hmm. from a mental illness perspective. But the reality is the majority of us have a mental illness because from God's perspective, there is no reason to be afraid of anything in the universe. And if the average person listed some fears, what we find frequently is we list a few fears and then we list a few more and then we realise that, oh, we've got more than that, more than that. And then we realise, oh, that were all our physical ones. We've also got all these emotional ones and yes. all these sexual ones. and that all these seem scarier than <laughs> the physical ones. And they all seem ones. scarier than the physical ones. Yeah. Uh, and then we've also got a long list of fears of, you know, if we can count it a bear on a road or something like that, we're also afraid of them. And then, you know, and then yeah. by the time you add it up, you know, you probably end up with you know, a few hundred, if not a thousand fears, you know. Yeah. And the reality is God says, well, all of those are illnesses, uh, mental illnesses. From yeah. my perspective, from God's perspective, these things are not anything to be afraid of. But God knows that they're in your soul now. And God created a whole system that allows you to now get to the cause of them and release them. But that system is emotional. Yeah. So it requires you to understand the creation of the emotion. And it requires you to understand the potential that you can release the emotion. Yeah, so um, our, our question was about the source of emotion yep. and you, you established that's from the soul. And we've given some examples of how that's the case. Of how that's the case. And mm. really you've started to touch on things like the law of attraction and, and fear and what mental illness really is. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you say that emotion originates in the soul, and it's flow, we know it's energy in motion. What happens to it after that? What, how does it then affect um, our bodies? And it, sort of, it flows, doesn't it, from the soul to the spirit and the material of bodies? So the, the energy systems, remember our bodies are all energy. Yep. They're all energy in motion, actually. Yep. So you could say, in a way, that the physical body and the spirit body are basically an expression of the soul's emotion. Yes. Because it is energy in motion. Yeah. And, but the soul, the physical body and spirit body, both energy and motion. So obviously if you suppress a certain energy in your soul, it's bound, and it does, of course, have an effect in your bodies. It's going to shut down certain areas of your bodies. Now when your body is shut down, the organs that surrounding that particular area can no longer function properly. Mm -hmm. So this is going to cause major problems. So yeah. if you've shut down energy around your brain, then 
there'll be a problem with what happens in your brain and your thinking and your logical capacity to analyze and understand and your understanding of mathematics and science and other things which require some kind of intellectual acknowledgement of those particular things all will be impaired mm. Uh, if you sat down towards music for some reason, and many people are because of certain things mum played or dad played in certain emotional moods that then entered the child and then they realise that, that, that that's not a nice thing to play or that's a great thing to play or whatever. Yeah. And so we're often shut down with regard to music or art and those kind of things. Well, that affects certain organs of the body as well and, and so forth and so forth. And, there's, uh, and in fact, as we've spoken about before, in, in the how the human soul functions, if you shut down energy in, in a certain way, of a cert, every single flavour has an effect on a disease, uh, on the accidents and all sorts of things happening to the bodies. Yeah. So, of course, what happens to the bodies is just the effect of what's going on within the soul. Uh -huh. It's not the cause. So you could say emotions originate in the soul. Yep. They flow to the spirit and the physical bodies and the... Uh, and everything that happens in those bodies. Yep, so is the, the thoughts effect. and even the actions of Correct. those. The language, bodies the thoughts, the actions, the expressions. Is all originating with this grand controller, which is the soul, which is the source of all emotion. Correct. And it's all flowing and it's affecting everything. It affects everything. Yep. It affects everything in the universe. Yep. <laughs> Two different degrees. Uh huh. You know, so if. Obviously, if you do something here and then someone in 25 light years away, will struggle to feel it probably <laughs> and this is the other reason why they struggle to feel it because the more suppressed in your soul you become the less other people around you are able to feel the intensity of your emotion because the reality is you're suppressing the intensity of your emotion mm -hmm. and when you suppress the intensity of your emotion you affect a smaller and smaller area of your environment and on this earth, it, create, create, it requires 7 billion people to affect something, right, generally, or at least hundreds of millions of people to affect something generally in the environment because of the low amounts of energy that each one has because of the heavy suppression. Mm. So you're also then saying that the less that we suppress, the more that we allow this energy to flow, mm -hmm. the stronger our presence is and the more impact we have. On our environment, mm -hmm. yes. And you imagine, of course, if you express these emotions in a positive way, yes. then obviously it has a huge powerful effect upon everyone, not only on earth, but also in the spirit world. Yeah, that's, it's a, an exciting and beautiful thought really, isn't of it? Of course, yeah. of course. It's beautiful the way God's created everything. Yeah. And it makes sense. Like God's, a, when I, I often marvel of how stupid people believe God is. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like they, how, how the perception of the world is that God is stupid. You yes, mean? Yeah. 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 Like people believe God is stupid. Yeah. And no, God's, God's the most intelligent crea creator. And, and so everything is a marvel to study yeah. once you understand how it works. Yeah. So even the, you know, people constantly comment about on this planet, they constantly comment about disease and you know, what God's will is about a person getting disease. It's not God's will that you get a disease. No. It's your will that you get a disease. <laughs> like, yeah. God created a system that doesn't allow for disease if you do things in harmony with love. Right? So something has to be out of harmony with love in order for you to get a disease. Something's got to be in, out of harmony with this flow of energy inside of your soul in order for you to get a disease. So, you know, God created it that way so that the disease is a reflection that you know something's wrong with your soul. You know something's not flowing. It's a way of getting a feedback mm -hmm. to what's going on inside of yourself. And, it's a, and if you think of that alone, it means that God's telling you things every single moment of your day. Every single pain that you experience in the course of a day is a part of this feedback system that God's got operational to help you understand what is the source of all of your emotion. Yeah. Which is, and what's the source of all of your problems? What's the source of all of your disease? What's the source of all of your thoughts? What's the source of all of your feelings? What is the source of everything that's happening to every attracted event is your soul. Yeah. And God's trying to tell you how powerful your soul is through, mm -hmm. through the expression of God's laws in the universe. Mm. And, and once you understand that, you have the capacity to change it. So it's only when you have... So this is where I see mankind going down the wrong track with regard to you know, physical illness, for example. Yeah. Instead of understanding that the soul is the cause of all of these problems, 
they believe there are physical causes of all of these problems and they're ignoring the sole cause. This means that the sole cause will continue and potentially worsen because of the denial and therefore the disease, no matter how much it's treated, will become worse, which is actually what we observe happening on this planet yeah. with most diseases. With a lot of diseases, particularly those ones that could be so, said to be life-threatening illnesses and de that death results from, that are internal, you know, in terms of what happens in the body, all of them are completely under the control of the soul mm -hmm. and the soul's responses. So, so, and and on and on the saying, also disease, so-called diseases that have been cured by medicine are all cured by can also be cured by the soul. So why would you need medicine in the end? You don't. Yeah, and uh, if the soul has this much impact um, and it's affecting the spiritual and physical bodies, what we do to the physical body in order to repair that is obviously not dealing with the, the, the major cause. influence upon both of those bodies. Correct. So we can work with the, the physical body as an effect, if you will. Yes, but, but the, it's pointless, really. Yeah. It's really a pointless exercise of our energy. Yeah. Because the reality is, although a person who's in total denial of their soul and wants to be, feels it's not pointless, of course. You know, the reality is most people would prefer to work on their physical body than actually work on their soul, because the soul, working on your soul, is, is sometimes emotionally traumatic. Mm -hmm. So most people prefer to just work on their body, but it's never going to be a permanent solution. That's why we die of old age. You know, even if we don't get sick anymore because we're pumped ourselves full of this drug and that drug and this drug and that drug, by the time we get to 70 or 80, we're taking 25 drugs and, uh, and we die anyway. And that's because of what's in the soul. Mm. And, and uh, our inability to focus on the cause and just want to address the effect causes us to have a degradation in further, in further condition. So it's far better to go, right, my soul is my cause of all the emotion and my emotion, the lack of flow of it, is the cause of all of disease. So it's far better off if I focus on my soul and its development in love and its development in the way in which it expresses emotion than it is for me to focus on anything else. And this is where it makes sense for us to focus on our emotional condition. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Mm. How is emotion controlled? Well, emotion, which remember is energy that's allowed to be in motion yes. <laughs> by the soul. So therefore it's controlled by the soul's will. Mm -hmm. So it's not controlled by anything external to the soul. And it's not controlled by the mind or the brain. It's controlled by the will, how the will of of the soul is exercised. Uh -huh. So that's pretty concise, definite answer there. <laughs> it is. Perhaps if we give some examples. Yeah. Um, so, so for example, if we have a thought come up in our mind, well, that's being controlled by the soul's will. Uh -huh. So let's say the thought is, I would like to go and get a cake. <laughs> All right? Yeah. We don't know perhaps the reason why we want to get a cake. We just feel like a cake. This is the term we use. Yeah. I feel like ice cream. I yeah. feel like a cake. I yeah. feel like some alcohol. I yeah. feel like a drink. I yeah. feel... And these are all feelings. They are all feelings yeah. generated by the soul's will. Yes. Now, the, the soul wanted that thing for a reason. Mm -hmm. Right? And this is the secret of what we need to find, the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Once we find the reason, we can, we can correct any behaviour that we feel is unreasonable. Yep. Yeah. So, so, for example, a person who's gluttonous eventually becomes very fat, right, and becomes very unhealthy. And, and obviously their will of their soul is, I need more food, I need more food, I need more food. More food, in fact, than their body can even handle to digest and, and so it stores it all as fat. Now, obviously something's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not the body that's wrong. Mm. It's, there's, there's an exercise of something in the soul saying, I want more, I want more, I want more, I need more, I need more, I need more, mm -hmm. when you don't need more, mm -hmm. right? So what you need to do is find out how you're exercising your will. Because mm -hmm. it's your will that's caused you to decide that you need more, or you feel like you want more, or whatever. Yeah. So then you would need, then you'd need to go, okay, what does eating give me that I don't get from anything else? Because yeah. that's what my soul wants, obviously. Yes. And then we start seeing associations between 
eating and safety, eating and security, eating and the allaying of fear, eating and the suppression of anger, yeah. and so forth and so forth. And once we find those particular co-relations, yeah. now we have ability to release the causal emotion inside of the soul that control is controlled by the will mm -hmm. to be suppressed at this point. And we now allow its expression. So we allow our soul to express itself emotionally, which releases an emotion, which then no longer drives the will in a negative direction. Mm. Yeah. So we've said um, that the will is emotional, mm -hmm. uh, it's controlled by the soul. Mm -hmm. And in that example you gave, you were talking about wanting the will or the soul's emotions generating a desire for a substance or a food or something mm -hmm. um, and that creating ill health. Mm -hmm. So in that example, when we know that the soul controls everything that happens mm -hmm. and where re our result is ill health, mm -hmm. the soul's will is actually acting to suppress or try to control an emotion, isn't it? Correct. Through it's this substance. Correct. It's, it's doing one of three things. It's in denial of the emotion, it's resisting the emotion or it's suppressing the emotion, yeah. whether consciously or not. Uh -huh. Whether we intellectually know it's happening or not, it is happening. Yep, yep. And so that's an attempt really to control emotion. Yes. Um, and it's the soul... Or to experience alternative emotions. Ah, great. So, for example, you know, a person who feels a lot of sadness, for example, mm -hmm. obviously it wants to feel the release of their sadness, but they don't want to go through the process of releasing it. They don't yeah. want to go through crying. Yeah. So what they do is they look for an alternative emotion that they can rely upon. Yeah. Now, to do that with a substance, you'd probably turn to alcohol, mm -hmm. for example, because alcohol is a great way of suppressing or nos being nostalgic about sadness yeah. without actually releasing it. Yeah. So, so the soul will be drawn towards alcohol abuse, for mm. example, mm -hmm. when it's suppressing sadness. Mm. Mm. So we could actually use physical substances or our mind to try to control yes. emotion? The reality is physical substances, as we'll learn later about addictions in other questions, yeah. physical substances are far more reliable than anything else. <laughs> you know, because when you say reliable, what do you mean? Well, they're reliable in the sense that you're not reliant on another person yeah. to give you the satisfaction that a physical substance can bring you. Mm -hmm. This is why physical substances are the emotional choice mm -hmm. of the person in addiction. Yeah. And, and we like physical substances because they're reliable. They mm. always bring the same result, generally. Yeah. Now, of course, that's, it's like we slowly desensitise to the physical sub substance after a while, yeah. and we need more and more and more of it, which causes our degradation. But, but generally, that's far more reliable than relying on a person to give mm. you a feeling mm. or, or rely on the environment in some way or the government to give you a feeling. You know, that's sometimes highly unreliable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what we do is we gravitate towards the most reliable substance that helps us avoid the feeling. Mm -hmm. And that again is the expression of our will. We're, not, we're attempting to avoid the feeling, yep. which is, that we're, we're, in other words, what we're doing is we're attempting, using our soul's will, yep. we're attempting to avoid the expression of an energy that's inside of us emotionally. We're suppressing it or resisting it or denying it. And as a result of our choice to do those things, we gravitate towards things that assist us in the denial of that emotion. Mm -hmm. And we look for substances that will actually substitute feelings in lieu of the emotion that we do not wish to experience. So even in my family, if things were a bit tense, my mum would say, Let's all have sing a, a song. Or, yeah, or Let, we'll have a cup of tea you used to do with me. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> yeah, I used to do that. That was a physical substance. So she'd say, let's all sing a song. So Yeah, so she's trying to feel happy and upbeat. Correct. When really, when really there's a lot of tension sadness and or tension sadness or, or and fear, fear triggered. there. So, so that's her go-to. That's, that's her addiction. Her, yeah, <clears> yeah. <throat> so that's her addiction. That's... Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. That's her expression of her will. Correct. Her will is that she wants to suppress the feeling and the only way she learnt as a child to suppress certain feelings was to revert to music. Mm. And so a person reverts to music under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. And music is a physical thing, something that's quite reliable. Right? It's not like you're relying on another person 
Although when she says, let's all <laughs> sing, she is relying on other people <laughs> yeah, as well. So yeah, there's yeah. Two, two addictions now. But, but the reality is for most people, we revert to physical addictions, uh, usually in preference to other forms of addictions in order to suppress the soul's emotion. And that is the soul exercising its will to do so. Yeah, so um, I think what I was... And we can exercise our will in a different direction. Okay. We can. We could choose to, instead of going for the substance that suppresses the emotion, we could, tend, we could choose to go for something that actually helps us experience the emotion. Yeah. We could absolutely. choose to exercise our will in a completely different direction. But that is going to require a force of will that opposes your previous will. Yeah, and a that, change of a will. A change of will, if you like. And uh, people find change of will quite difficult mm. because there are emotional reasons often that cause our will to be exercised in certain directions. Yeah. And usually that, uh, the biggest uh, problem is the desire to avoid pain. Yeah. That is the biggest motivator generally in a person stopping from using their will in a loving direction. Yeah. It would have to be the biggest one, wouldn't it? Why else would yes, anyone uh, do that? Well, you know, the pain could be external or internal. Yeah. It doesn't, the source of the pain might be, vary. Yeah. Uh, but generally, yes, the biggest problems that we face within our soul are the avoidance of pain. Some people also have the avoidance of pleasure mm. for certain reasons as well. In other words, that they may have been shamed in the past. So there's pain I was underneath say, that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, generally, it's the avoidance of pain. Or if we be more specific, it's the avoidance of the experience of pain. Yes. That causes us. Or in other words, the experience of the emotion. Yes. That causes us to then judge the emotion and suppress the emotion. Yeah. The reality is emotions don't have any positive or negativeness in them. Mm -hmm. So if we're angry or sad or, or shamed, or none of these things are negative or positive emotions they become negative or positive through our experience, through what we choose to do with our will. So this is why we must understand that it's our will that is the controller <laughs> of the expression of our emotion. Great. So um, what I'm hearing you say is that the will controls emotion, mm -hmm. that the will is emotional and it's all based in the soul. Yes. And, we can and use, by the way, yep. it, we must say that even if you have no emotional injuries, you can still use your will negatively. Okay. So we must understand that the exercise of will and the potential of its use in a negative or positive direction is completely independent of any emotional injury that we have. Mm -hmm. right? Of course, having emotional injuries exacerbates the, pro the tendency to use our will negatively. Yep. But we can't use emotional injuries as the excuse or the reason why we used our will negatively because the reality is we can use our will negatively even if we have no emotional injuries. Mm -hmm. So we must understand that it's the exercise of our will that is of supreme importance here. And in fact, one of the things God's, is, God's teaching us by having us live on the earth and then in the spirit world is how to exercise our will in a voluntary loving manner. Definitely. You know, it's one of the biggest reasons the why we important. exist. Yeah. And for most people, we choose to use our will in a negative manner, even if, and, and it's independent of, our emotional injuries that we have. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, if we do have emotional injuries, it does assist us to use our will because the emotional injuries justify the use of the will in a negative direction. Yeah. So the emotional injury tells you, you should do this. You should use your will in a negative direction. Mm. So you place most people in a, a situation where there's a war or conflict. If they have been personally abused you know, or harmed, or let's make it even more strong, strong, strongly stated, let's say their child has been personally abused or harmed, and they have an opportunity to abuse or harm the person or the child of the person who harmed their child, most people would use that as a justification, the original violence, as a justification for the unloving behaviour. Yeah. And that's independent of what the emotion inside of them is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like they could choose to do that even if there were no emotions inside of them about the situation before it began. No injured emotions. No injured emotions yeah. Yeah. inside Imagine. of them before it began. They could make that choice mm. to use their will in that direction. Mm. 
So this is why we must understand that the will is the controller of what happens in, with regard to emotional expression. Yeah. It's not something that's automatic, as people would tend to su suggest. It's not, when I say automatic, it's not something where people can go, oh, I didn't know <laughs> why, why I, just, I just felt like I had to go and do it. it, was, it let's say oh, it was I a see. terrible thing. Yeah. And they went and did it. And they just said, oh, I just felt like I had to go and do it. Well, no, there was something inside of the soul that determined that the expression of the will in that direction was positive, even while it might be negative. Yes. So they, there was a belief yeah. inside of the person at the time that that was the best use of their will. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you're talking about basically from what I, from what I hear you talking about, um, the the emotion is controlled by the use of our will. Mm -hmm. That, and we can. What you've talked about is that we can use that will to experience emotion or to suppress emotion. Yes, and, and, so and it's independent. Our choice is independent of what emotional injuries we have. Yes. So yes. this is a very important part of it. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah. So it's completely down to our will. Um, and then there's another, I suppose, in the notes that I have in front of me, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the mind can try to influence the soul's will but will never be successful. So I suppose I hear you talking about two... There's two different ways we can try to control our emotion. One is it's soul-based and that will be successful mm -hmm. <laughs> and the other is mind-based and that's never going to be successful. No, it's going to have limited success because the soul will always be dominant and that's a characteristic of the human soul. So whatever is in the soul will retain dominance. So if inside of your soul there is an emotion saying, I want to go and do something negative, yeah. then then doesn't matter how much you exercise your mind, sooner or later you're going to do that negative thing. Yeah, right. so you're going to have to use your mind to find the reason why you do that negative thing that exists inside of your soul and release that emotion. Once you release that emotion, there won't be the gravitation towards yeah. that negative action. Yeah. But it still doesn't mean that you'll take a positive one because that is dependent upon your will. Yeah. So you will, you can have no emotional injuries inside of your soul at all and still use your will negatively. Mm. Yep. Mm. So we need to understand that. Yeah, so I guess I'm thinking about... And can I so also say, sorry, Yeah. we can also have heaps of emotional injuries in our soul and use our will positively. Mm. That's the beauty of our will. Our will can be independent of our emotional injuries. Yeah. But... If we use our will to release the negative emotional injuries that cause us to take negative choices and decisions, that would be even more powerful if you think about it. Well, isn't that the only way from what you've just said? We can have a lot of emotional injuries, but if we use our will of the mind... No, it's the will of the soul being used. It's the will of the... It's exercise, the will of the soul being used. So, so it's a, going like... I keep on doing this particular thing that I know is bad. Mm -hmm. I have decided that I am going to do everything in my power now to, to make sure I never do that again. Yeah. Now, that's the use of my will. That is an emotionally soul-driven desire, if it's real, to do that. Yeah. However, I must also understand that perhaps I have emotional injuries in my soul that cause me to gravitate towards using my will in that direction. Yeah. And if those emotional injuries are not released then no matter how much I'm exercising my will, I'm going to find it very difficult. Yeah. If, I, I won't find it necessarily impossible, but I'll find it very difficult. Every time a situation comes up where that happens, then I'll gravitate towards that behaviour. Yeah. So, for example, if we look at a man with pornography, he's, he's looking at pornography all the time, then he decides that this is not good for his relationship, he realises that it's driven by some internal sadness, so he decides he's going to start looking at the issue, you know, looking at the issue from a soul-based perspective. Mm. The first thing he'd try to do is not engage the addiction. Yep. So he'd get rid of all of his pornography. Yep. Right? But inside of his soul, there's still a gravitation towards pornography because he's yet to release the emotional reason why he wants the pornography. Mm. Right? So he can use his will now, which is a soul-based function, he can use his will to stop watching porn. But unless he releases the emotional reason why he feels like watching it, mm. 
Mm. He's going to always feel like watching it. Yeah. All right? And this is why a lot of people say when they go to Alcoholics Anonymous or, so, or AA or something like that, they always say, oh, I am, it's a disease. Because, they, because the soul is diseased. Mm. <laughs> the soul has this feeling that the will has to be exercised in that direction. The only real solution is going to be to release from the soul the reason why it feels gravity towards, it feels a pull towards that particular behaviour. Yeah. Now, on one hand, if I'm exercising my will to stop the behaviour, that's fantastic. That means now my soul is engaged in not wanting to engage this behaviour. Mm. But if I exercise my will to deny the cause of the behaviour at the same time, I'm making my job very, very difficult because I'm, a, I'm actually suppressing the reason why I engage that behaviour. Yeah. It would be far better to first use our will to no longer engage the behaviour, but secondly, and more importantly, to engage the underlying understanding emotionally as to why I've engaged that behaviour and what emotion drives me engaging that behaviour. Mm -hmm. Once I do that, I will release from myself the reason why I feel drawn to that behaviour and then I won't feel drawn to that behaviour anymore automatically. I would have to exercise my will to do it. Yeah. I'd f have to force myself to watch porn after that. <laughs> Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Instead, yeah. Of, instead of it being something that I feel like pulled towards or drawn towards. Yeah. 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 And I think I've given a fairly good summary there of how the will of the soul can be exercised positively or even when... There are emotions inside of us that draw us to pull in a, in, in a negative direction or, a, yeah. or an unloving direction. Yeah, mm. great. Yep. So, so we need to understand that control is not all negative. We can positively or negatively control emotion using our will. Yeah. The positive control of emotion using our will is that we go through the process of discovering the emotion and we want to expose it and release it. That's the positive use of our will in order to control our emotion. Mm. And we can do that, the release process, in an undamaging way. In other words, if we had rage or anger, we could control ourselves in the way in which we express this rage or anger by, by not going out and expressing it and damaging somebody, but rather going into our room and being private and expressing it and really connecting with it in a positive way. So the anger isn't really a negative emotion. It's only how we control it as it determines whether it becomes negative or not. Mm. Now, if we control it in such a way that we try to suppress it or, you know, or we're afraid of it or we try to control it in the sense that we like to dump it on other people and, and all of those kind of methods, now we're controlling the emotion in a negative direction. We're yeah. using our will to make our soul worse by the expression of emotion. So we need to understand that the expression of emotion we need to allow its expression, its experience, but we're able, using our will, to control it positively or negatively. We're able to control it in or out of harmony with love. Yeah, that's great that you've clarified that because I think a lot of us feel like when we talk about controlling emotion, because we've talked in previous topics and at length mm -hmm. about suppression and denial of emotion mm, different then processes. when we use the word control often we think oh control of emotion is bad it mm. relates to suppression and denial mm. um, not understanding that out of control emotion is not a positive thing either it is well it depends what emotion <laughs> doesn't it it's sort of like if you're out of control uh, in the throes of ecstasy, making love to your woman or something like that, then I'd say that's a very positive expression of your emotion. But but what you were saying to us, of I guess what I understood from what you said though, is you're still controlling that 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 experience through your will. You're not controlling the flow of the emotion. No, but you you're controlling how it's flowing, to whom it's flowing, in what way it's flowing. You're not controlling its flow now. Mm -hmm. You're deciding to actually decide upon what the circumstance is that you're going to allow its expression. Yeah. So you see, the average person doesn't do this. What they actually do is they feel rage and then they decide, well, I feel rage, so I'll just dump it on the nearest possible person. 
Yeah. You know, if that happens to be the dog, well, they kick it. If that happens to be the, the you know, the, the wife, they yell at her. If it happens to be a child, they belt it. And, you know, it just depends on whether they feel more powerful than the person or less powerful than the person, how that emotion will be experienced. Mm -hmm. If you exercise it positively, you go, oh, I'm angry. Uh, firstly, I need to feel this anger because I don't want to bottle it up. Otherwise, it's just going to be st stored there in my soul. So I go into my room and now I've control the manner in which I'm way, way I'm going to express this emotion. I'm still going to allow the emotion to experience, be yeah. experienced or ex expressed. And this is what I need to do because the emotion has to be experienced or expressed in order to flow. Remember, the energy has to flow. It has mm -hmm. to come out of us somehow. So mm -hmm. we let the energy flow. So we let the energy flow in the room. But we understand that the reason why we're angry is because we have some addictions here. Mm. And there's a deeper emotion that I also need to let flow. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be more painful than my anger. Mm. And it's going to feel far less powerful than my anger. And I need to allow that flow. And I need to get to that. I need to use my will to get to that emotion. I need to go there. And this is where I feel most people don't understand the positive use of their will with regard to negative emotions. Mm. Negative emotions are only negative when you use them out of harmony with the loving use of your will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in other words, when you are unloving in the use of your will, an emotion in its expression can become negative. Mm. So for example, you can have a lovely emotion where you sexually desire your partner and she's the person you're married to or whatever and so she's your partner and so you sexually desire her. That's a loving expression of your will. You could then demand to have sex with her. Now it's become an unloving use of your will. Instantly, bang, unloving use of your will. Yeah. You went from lovingly using your will to unloving using your will in an instant mm -hmm. and probably didn't even realise it most of the time. And, of course, she then feels like she's being demanded, her sex is demanded of her. If she, con if she conforms, she's really almost being raped. You know, so there's, there's manipulation involved perhaps, but it's, it's not a very pleasant experience. It won't be a pleasant experience for both of you because you've now used your will out of harmony with the expression of love. Of course, assuming she doesn't have the same desire or feeling of attraction. Assuming yeah. that, assuming yeah. that. Yeah. But but even even if she does, the demand, the, the demand saying, itself yeah. is yeah. unloving. Yeah. The demand that she now responds in a certain way is unloving. Yeah. So she could say no, or she could say yeah, I'll be in it. But either way, your demand was unloving. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, just feeling your feelings of sexual love for your partner is a loving expression of your will. Mm -hmm. As soon as they become demanding, you are now using them in an unloving expression mm -hmm. of your will. <laughs> and this is where you've been emphasising um, really a lot about the responsibility we have mm -hmm. for the use of our will. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that even if we have injuries, it doesn't mean that we are justified in using our will in this negative way. Correct. And, and that's very, very important to understand that. Very yep. important. Most people don't understand that. Most people think, oh, I feel angry, so I'm allowed to get angry. They just say I'm allowed to get angry with everybody, and, yeah. and they do. You know, they yeah. say, no, that's not what I'm saying yeah. at all. Yeah. You misunderstand completely for your own benefit. Yes. Because you really want to enter a powerful state with your rage, and it's not the goal. Yeah. So the release of emotion is actually kind of an out of control experience, but we yes. are in control of how our will is directed to experience Correct. that how emotion. that emotion is funneled yes if you like yeah so so the emotion needs to flow yes you don't want to suppress it you don't want to resist it you don't want to deny it it has to flow mm -hmm. but how you allow this emotion to flow will determine whether you're loving or not mm -hmm. and what i'm suggesting is there is always a loving or unloving choice that we make here yeah. it's a choice to either use our will lovingly and therefore they let the emotion flow in a loving way. And so anger can flow in a loving way. Yeah. So you, you can go into your room and let the anger flow in a loving way. So it's not controlling the anger. Mm -hmm. It's allowing the anger to flow, but, let, but making sure that it happens in a loving way. Yeah. You can also have a very pleasurable emotion and let it flow in an unloving way. Yeah. So you can, you know, for, so sexual desire, you can have flow in an unloving way. Love, you can have flow and turn it into something completely different, like addiction, mm -hmm. just through the expression of your will. Yeah. You can say, I love that person, and then you start becoming addicted to that person, and then you're demanding of the person, and then you're angry with the person, and you have all these expectations of the person. It's not love anymore. Mm -hmm. You've now used your will to turn that initial longing, which might have been loving, yeah. 
into something that's now very, very dangerous yeah. and, uh, and difficult for her and yourself in, in, the, in the example I've given. Yeah. So, so, yeah, this is where we need to understand that our emotion is controlled by our will. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that we're now controlling it to suppress, deny or resist it or substitute for it. What I'm saying is controlled in the way in which it's expressed. We express it lovingly. Mm -hmm. So you can have an unloving emotion that's created in an unloving way inside of your soul, like anger, fear and those shame, those kind of emotions, and you can express it lovingly. Mm. That's the beauty of the will, of yeah. the exercise of your will. Yeah. And if we understand that, then we understand how to progress. Yeah. Because it's only when we use our will to express the emotion unlovingly that we degrade our soul. Yeah. So, so we can have an unloving emotion inside of us that we express mm. lovingly by, you know, taking action to, to let it out in a loving manner and we don't damage our soul at all. Yeah. And we can have a loving emotion that we express in our, inside of us and we can do the, exactly the opposite. We can express it unlovingly yeah. as a demand and an expectation. Now it's become unloving immediately yeah. and we're damaging our soul and the soul of others in that moment. Yeah. And this is why people don't progress much on their life on earth. So, because they, they progress a little bit and then they do something damaging. They mm -hmm. progress a little bit, damaging, progress, damaging. And I've said that many times in seminars, but it's like this in the course of a day, yeah. where we do a loving thing, an unloving thing, a loving thing, an unloving thing. And by the, at the start of the day, we were at this level of love. And at the end of the day, we're at the same level of love. Yeah. Right? And for many people, we're just slightly lower level of love. Yeah. <laughs> oftentimes. And... If we chose to, every single time we have an emotion, to just exercise it and allow it to flow lovingly, yeah. no matter how difficult the emotion, like shame, anger, fear, whatever the difficulty of the emotion in terms of our experience, we allowed it to flow lovingly every time, then what would happen at the start of the day? We'd be here, and at the end of the day, we'd be here with our condition of love. It's a fantastic it's thought, isn't it, that with whatever soul damage we have within us right now, if we exercise our will in this way, in a, in a positive direction, mm -hmm. it can't get any worse than it already is. Correct. And it can only get as better. As long as we exercise our will in a loving way. Yeah. And that's the beauty. And, and the scary thing is that given the soul damage we have right now, as a snapshot, if mm. we choose to use our will in an inconsistent way with regards to love mm. or just to ignore love and to feel justified mm -hmm. through our injuries, then it's going to get a whole lot worse, actually. Yes, we're mostly going to be a yo-yo, you know, where you yeah. go up and down, up and down, up and down, unloving, loving, up and down, you know, yeah. in the course of a day and our condition doesn't change. Yeah. Or, or we choose to choose, because of the damage that's within us, regularly to choose to do the unloving thing mm -hmm. more than we choose the loving. Yeah. And of course, then our soul is going to degrade by the end of the day. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's what happens with most people yeah. on the planet. So yeah. by the time we end our life, our soul has degraded so much that it killed us. Mm. The lack of energy flowing in our bodies now is so low mm. that we died from the result of it. And we're now in the spirit world with all these emotions still that we have to walk through, plus the consequences of our unloving use of our will. Yeah. And that's pretty damaging. Yeah. And that's where most people arrive in the spirit world, in the hells of the spirit world, in a damaged state, still having to learn that they can still use their will in a loving way. Yeah. There was a lovely channeling I did just a few days ago with a, a lady named Grace, Grace, I think it was. And I, I think she, she was, I think she demonstrated there the loving use of her will, actually. Because yeah. initially she was expressing her rage and she was swearing and carrying on expressing her rage, but she wasn't that angry with me. Mm -hmm. She was just rage, enraged, you know, and some of the things she'd get a bit upset about, but, you know, most of the time she was just in feeling her rage. And we took her through the expression of her rage, the expression of other emotions, eventually the expression of some sadness, and her condition improved. Mm. And that's a lovely example of somebody who needed to have the rage, could feel the rage, but needed to understand why they had it. Yeah. And, and once she understood why she had it, she could get to some of the deeper grief. Mm. 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 No, it was a very beautiful channeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I feel that's a good illustration of what you can do. You yeah. can express your emotion lovingly or you can express it unlovingly. But you must always allow its expression. 
-hmm. So what I'm suggesting is don't lock it down because that's even worse again. You know, that, mm. that's, that's like denial, suppression, shutdown. That's the worst thing you could do. But, but it's no good either just to, just to express it unlovingly. Yeah. What God's trying to train us to do is to express our emotions, no matter what they are, in a, in a loving manner. Yeah. 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 Mm. Great. Thank mm. you. Mm. What makes an emotion good or bad? Well, perhaps what we need to do is firstly define good and define bad. Mm -hmm. um, and then we ask ourselves whether there is whether we can classify emotions as good or bad at, at all. So, so let's define good. Good, to me, is something that is in harmony with love and in harmony with God's truth. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Something that's bad or you could classify as evil, something that's out of harmony with love and out of harmony with God's truth. So that's what I'd classify as bad. Now, the question then becomes, is, can emotion be classified as good or bad? And the answer to that is no, the emotion itself is not good or bad. So it doesn't matter, even if it, if it, even if it got in there by a negative or bad event, an evil event or an event out of harmony with love, it doesn't necessarily mean the emotion is bad or good. It's just an emotion. Right. So, for example, I, I feel angry. Yep. Right? Or I feel sad or I feel shamed or I feel... It's just an emotion, right, at mm -hmm. that point. Okay. It's an emotion. It is an emotion out of harmony with God's love and truth at that moment, isn't it? Well, it's an, it's an emotion that's out of harmony with our own happiness, certainly. Yeah. And it's an emotion that if we were completely in harmony with God's truth and God's love, that it wouldn't be within us. Yep. I agree with that. But a lot of the times we never made it get there. We never we, we, weren't, we weren't the ones who created it in the sense that there was a, environmental conditions that caused us to eventually create that emotion within yeah. us. And more importantly, not the creation of the emotion, but it's the storage of the emotion that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. So in other words, environmentally, conditions were such that, we, that emotions were caused to be stored inside of our soul rather than expressed. Mm -hmm. Because if they were expressed at the time, they wouldn't be within us now. Yeah. So, so this is the beauty. If you let the kid, the child, cry, he cries out all the sadness, yeah. and now it's not in him anymore. Yeah. But if you say to the child, I'm going to belt you if you cry, yeah. you have not only now got the sadness locked in him, but you've got a layer of terror above oh. it of violence yeah. that causes the child to suppress the emotion. Mm. Now, now that, that is the damaging thing, the suppression of the emotion, not the feeling of it. Not the expression of it, but the suppression of it. So, so we could say that the suppression of any emotion is actually out of harmony with God's love. Mm. And so therefore going to create some form of badness or evil in our life. Okay. Yep. And the suppression of any... Oh, and, that, and that can be a suppression of a positive emotion too, is going to create some form of bad or evil in our life. Uh -huh. It's a suppression of any emotion. Yep. You can see that if we see emotion this way we don't sort of start judging it as bad or good. What we see instead is we go, it's the flow of it and how it flows that determines whether it turns out to be bad or good for my soul. Okay. Now, if I choose to allow this emotion to flow by damaging other people or purposefully damaging myself or in my environment... Yes. Now it's going to have evil consequences allowing that emotion to flow mm -hmm. uh, in that regard, in that way. If I choose to allow the emotion to flow in harmony with love where I don't damage my environment and I don't damage the people around me and I don't damage myself in the process, now it's going to have a loving consequence for my soul. So it's going to be very good for me. Yes. Even if the emotion itself is painful, it will have a positive consequence for my soul yeah. under and, those circumstances. And my environment? And my environment and myself. Yep. My soul, myself, the other half of myself, my environment, other people around me, all going to benefit from me letting go of that motion, even though the emotion was negative. Mm -hmm. Letting go of it means it's no longer in me. It dissipates. Yep. It's, it's now no longer something that is going to attract things into my life to trigger or, nor is it something that I'm going to filter everything by. So yeah. I won't interact with everyone through the filter of that emotion anymore. Mm -hmm. And I won't, my, my understanding will improve yeah. because I will no longer understand everything through that filter of that emotion. So everything will improve. 
because I chose to be loving in my expression of the emotion, even if the emotion itself was created in a negative way or out of harmony with love mm -hmm. through my environmental circumstances. Mm -hmm. So this tells us then that there is not really any good or bad emotion. Mm -hmm. There's just good or bad ways that you allow it to flow. Yeah. You can allow every emotion to flow in a good way, a loving way, in harmony with love mm -hmm. and in harmony with God's truth, even if the emotion was created through a negative experience. And you can allow uh, even good emotions to flow in bad ways. Yeah. <laughs> you buy and then creating addictions through them and all sorts of things like that. So it just depends on, again, how you exercise your will as to whether these emotions turn out to be bad or good for you. Yeah. That's how, that is the determining factor. So there's a lot of emotions that a lot of us judge, like, oh, I'm angry yeah. or yeah. Oh, I'm afraid that's such a weak thing or whatever is shame, that means I'm bad. All of these, and a lot of the judgments of emotions even stop our flow of feeling them. Correct. And in fact, and, we purposefully use the judgment of emotion in order to stop the flow of emotion. Mm -hmm. So that's an exercise of our soul. It's a technique that we've used in our soul that we've learned yeah. It's a technique to deny our emotion, yeah. which is actually going to have a negative consequence. Yeah. The judgment of an emotion is worse, much, much worse than the emotion itself mm -hmm. because the judgment of an emotion stops the flow of the emotion. Yeah. Now, we also need to exercise our will in a loving way when we allow the emotion to flow, of course. Mm. So most people, what I observe them doing, firstly, is they judge their emotion, which actually prevents the emotion from flowing. Secondly, when they allow the emotion to flow, they use their will to damage other people with it. Yeah. Now, both of those things are going to cause the degradation of your soul. There, are, there is only one good way of, a, of feeling emotion, and that is allowing your emotion to flow without harming other people or yourself with it. Mm. That's the way that you will actually have a positive outcome through the experience of your emotion. Yeah, and it's the opposite of what most of us have been taught, isn't it? Correct. That we should judge, we should shut down things that we judge as bad Yes. Um, so that they don't do harm. And when in fact what you're saying is as long as we do it responsibly and in harmony with God's love, mm -hmm. it is only the allowance of those emotions that Which will have a positive effect. Have a positive effect. And you also said something else very uh, interesting, that it is a suppression of whatever the emotion is that is going to end up having bad negative consequences. Negative yeah. consequences. So I know a lot of us have shut down things like our childlike nature or, you know, our, yes. our excitement, all these things that, you know, not, we don't necessarily judge as bad, yep. but the shutting down of them, you're saying, will lead to negative consequences in our life. Yes. So, you know, all these beautiful qualities we often shut down and as a result of these beautiful qualities getting shut down, we have a tendency then to you know, exercise our will in a negative direction. Yeah. And, and yes, it's, a, it's, it's negative to exercise your will to suppress your childlike nature. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the circumstances. And you're saying actually that creates badness in yes. our life, yes. in our soul. Yes, and yeah. will attract events to trigger, you know, you away from doing that, you know, yeah. to get you back to being childlike. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's really interesting, I feel, the mm. way the soul works and... Very interesting how people judge their emotions as good or bad or otherwise, but it's only the way in which you feel them that determines whether they, it's good or bad. And whether it damages your soul or the soul of others or yes. actually improves it. Correct. So we ha from what you're saying, I'm hearing that we need to be careful about saying that's a good emotion and that's a bad emotion, yeah. rather to look more closely at are we, are we how expressing we express that it. emotion in a good way or a bad way. Correct. Yeah. It's the how we express it that matters. Mm -hmm. If we're expressing it negatively or we're trying to suppress it, we might be trying to suppress it, deny it, resist it, or we might be trying to substitute for it, or expressing it in, an, in a way that's out of harmony with love and truth that is going to cause a degradation of our soul. Mm. But if we choose to even experience the negative emotion, the sadness, the anger or the fear or whatever it is, if we choose to experience it in a way that's in harmony with love and truth, the way God intended, it's going to benefit our soul every time. Yeah. Every time. And it won't harm anyone else ever. That's the beauty of doing it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's great. Thanks. Yeah.